uh, yeah, so go ahead and introduce yourself. All right, hello, YouTube, I guess. This is going on YouTube, right? Yeah. Yeah, supposedly. Hi, YouTube. So uh, I am Richard, uh, handle Richard Von Lee on Instagram, and also have a YouTube channel called Dude on Track, all in one word. And basically, I just you know, do car vlogs and uh, sometimes reviews and working on short films, stuff like that. But I do appreciate you having me here. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm really excited to have you. And I will put links in the, the description below. So uh, probably somewhere around here, we're going to see like a screenshot of your Instagram and a screenshot of your your cool, YouTube cool. and stuff. So I'll throw it up there. Um, so as you know, I got a hold of you via what, what did I get a hold of you? Instagram. And yeah, I think it's it, Instagram. Yeah, I think so. And I think you've probably got, you know, no, not many people realize it. And, and it's funny because uh, my Instagram that, that I use for this, I don't, I made it after the equation change. So I don't have a ton of followers and subscribers mm -hmm. on there but my art one's got like 10 times more on it. And so it, it's That's funny for, for me because I'm like really dedicated to this right now mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. less to my art. And there's days where I'm like, Oh, do I just delete all my art content and, make that, <laughs> and just do know, this, like move all my, move all my viewers to this one yeah. or, or what do I do? But then I've got so many good memories and I still get like art. Uh, I still get a, a lot of business through that. So I can't mm -hmm. do that. I'm just, this one's going to have to grow on its own. I guess it's going to be a hard transition for sure. Having like, so much connections down to like nothing in the new area yeah it's gonna, be, it's gonna be pretty interesting well and plus like when i talk to people right i'm like hey mm -hmm. richard i promise i'm uh i'm pretty reputable will you talk to me and it's like you have like 300 followers on instagram brand like <laughs> you're not reputable and it's like you i never look at my other instagram yeah funny thing is, is i never like judge people based on Either how, like, cause I, I didn't care about my followers. Right? I never really like paid attention to it. It's just like, if I have them, that's good. Yeah. I'm glad I could have more people in the community, more people seeing what I do. Yeah. If I don't, I still do my, me. So I, I never really look at the followers and just, and I just heard you want to do an interview and I saw the other videos. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm down. This, cool. is, this is pretty cool stuff. I appreciate it. No, it's yeah. fun. And I'll probably, I need to figure out how podcast hosting is, but I'll probably throw them on some kind of a podcast too, because as you've probably seen, I'm not worried about the, the YouTube algorithm as much. Like I don't care about having 12 minute videos in, in that. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd rather put like the whole story and have good interviews that have like real meat to them. Yeah. Instead of having it be like, Hey, I'm Richard. I've got an RWB and check it out and bye. Like that's, <laughs> that's pretty much what they end up being if you do it that mm -hmm. way. Right. So. And the whole bullshit situation about COVID is just, we can't really have, you know? Yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't wait to do like season two of this will be, I'll come out and you'll like show me. The yeah. Let's, we could do, we could do another one. Cause there is definitely more stuff coming into the garage. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty interesting. That's cool. So talk to me. Where uh, where do you live? What, what I, area are you in? I am in BC, Canada, obviously, um, in uh, West Vancouver. So okay. it's up, way up north uh, on the BC area. That's cool. So is that out towards like Victoria? No, Victoria is actually a separate island by itself. So okay. yeah, well, Victoria is, yeah, it's, yeah you, you know where Victoria is. Yeah, yeah but no, it's, uh, it's basically past Vancouver. You just keep going up and it's like the tip top of Vancouver. Okay not in like a, in a hierarchy place, but just like a geographically, uh, geographically it's up on the top. Cool. Yeah. And, and uh, did you grow up there or where did you grow up? Actually I grew up, I was born in China. Okay. And then uh, at a very young age, I think at like um, fuck, grade two. Yeah. Uh -huh. Grade two. I went to Japan, Osaka. Uh -huh. And I studied there for about a year and then immediately moved to Canada and from then, uh, elementary school and then through uh, middle school and then parts of high school, I went back and forth as an exchange student in Japan. Okay. So, um, yeah. So you're, just, so you're what, trilingual? I am trilingual, yes. Indeed. Trilingual. Yeah. I'm working on Japanese still. Um, I speak English and Spanish fluent, but... Spanish is cool. Yeah, so I can speak Spanish really well. Uh, hopefully one day I'll interview like RWB Puerto Rico or something. <laughs> that would be awesome. And, and we can just do it all in Spanish and I'll, I'll send it down to his people, but yeah, that'll be dope. That'll be um, super cool. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. So what, um, what kind of got you into cars? Like what was your first car? My first like, car? Like, oh, like God. embarrassing as it might be. I want to know like what, what was the first thing you had four wheels and a key to my first thing? 
Well, that would be like a little kid cart, <laughs> like, okay. like a kid, like a kid's car, like an electric one, so that go like what, like a bit faster than how you walk. But yeah, like the no, power first, wheels and stuff. Yeah, yeah but okay. the first proper, I guess you can't say proper because after you guys hear this, is probably not going to be as proper as you think. But the first proper car I had is a 1994 NA automatic right hand drive Supra. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's a cool like for you know what's funny is like bringing up bringing up so MK4s mm. um people don't understand because everybody's so obsessed with like hey if it's not a manual like it's not a real car and stuff but people don't get the that the automatic transmission is pretty sought after in the drag racing community Oh yeah dude like, those things can to take a beating honestly I'm surprised after even now like after I sold the car I'm like wow they, these actually worth a bit yeah, I'm, I was surprised to learn that because I always thought that too, like you just want the manuals. But mm -hmm. my understanding is the drag race guys, like they really like the, the automatic transmission in the MK4. So Oh yeah, absolutely. There's a couple guys in the States that just solely run the automatics. Um, hopefully, so send me pictures of that after. I'll put them in the video. If you yeah, have, sure thing. You have them yeah, I have them. Actually, I even have the, um, the picture, uh, the video of me selling the car to this kid. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll put that in too if you send yeah. me it. I sold it to, for him, but to like for like four grand at that time. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it, it, like the funny thing is, I bought the car for eight, yeah, eight grand, and in high school, uh -huh. and that thing was pretty much worthless at that uh, at that certain time since it was a bit while back. And then I uh, sold it for four grand because I just didn't want it anymore. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then I got my current Supra, which is the left hand drive RZ twin turbo. Um, single car turbo conversion all that basically so, so you went straight from from that other car to the the current car yeah, no yeah yeah I straight i went from yeah <laughs> a right hand sort of super it's funny because my mom my mom really th thought of this one she really the reason i actually sold the car is one of the reasons because my mom does not want me driving a right hand drive car yeah and then she's like hey how about this she proposed a deal to me and obviously i'm not gonna say no you know yeah. is that she's like hey sell this car and whatever, how much, ever much the other one cost, I'll chip in for you. Just the difference? She's like, I'll pay the difference. On yeah, it? I'll pay the difference because I, 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 to be honest, I really enjoy that the Supra. Yeah. I, even though it's an automatic, it's it's kind of cool, you know. Yeah. And yeah. then, but obviously that didn't that sold it, and my mom's like, yeah, you know, find one, found one, and then uh, brought it over from the states. That's cool. Yeah, a lot of people. That's the other thing people don't get is, like, right-hand drive cars usually are expensive. Like when you're looking at Skylines and stuff, right? Oh yeah, GTRs. for sure. Yeah, yeah. But what they don't get is when it's the same car in America as it is in Japan, but it's left-hand drive instead of right. The left-hand drive cars have a higher value because more people can drive them, right? And so. Like when you're looking at Supras, absolutely, yeah. Like Supras and the NSX, RX for example, yeah, yeah. Like people will pay more for the the USDM than the mm -hmm. JDM because they don't like driving right hand. And exactly. I've driven a lot of right hand drive cars, and I don't know. I think that it's pretty easy to get used to. Yeah, it's totally fine. Like, like once you get used to it, it's definitely fine. It's just, <laughs> it's just you know the motherly instinct of my that's, mother. <laughs> that's cool. So the one that you have now. Mm -hmm. What was it like when you first got it? Like, was it just um, stock? Was it a little work done to it? It was a slight work. Ex uh, basically, it had some really shitty wheels that looked like TE37s. Um, Veristones. I'm sorry to, sorry to throw that company under the bus there, but they make really shitty wheels. Yeah, <laughs> but it had some really ca cast Veristone wheels. Um, and everything else is just stock. And um, stock lip, stock wing. Well, it's got a TRD wing. Um, 
and the engine is left completely stock as well. Um, it's a stocked in turbo. That's cool. Yeah. And, and so you got it and you said, let's go crazy with this thing. No, it's funny because when I first got it, it is, I never really thought of modding it to the point of it right now. It's yeah. always been like, hmm, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. I learned a bit more from my friends as well as different um, companies and, uh, you know, just doing my own research and seeing what I could do with the car. And then one day I, I saw Max Arido's Redox Supra. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, holy shit, this is what I want. And then, <laughs> and then I looked into it and I'm like, okay, that's a lot of money. So um, then things started going slowly. It's first the engine and then the body kit couple issues here and there you know, car builds and eventually it is what it is today at 800 horsepower and a wide body yeah what, what what kits on it it's what a uh, various redox so rydox redox uh -huh. whatever how you want to pronounce it it's basically cool. like a wide body yeah that's i mean what a cool car that's one of those cars that i always kind of wanted one mm -hmm. but like at every time I got close to buying one, I was like, oh, I don't know. There's this that I'm looking at. I, maybe I'm going to buy this instead. Yeah. And then I end up buying whatever. And then, you know, I always look back and it's funny because I'm a total Toyota guy. Like I like Toyota <laughs> stuff a lot. Um, you know, TRD, I've, baby. TRD. Yeah, I've had a lot of like Hachirokus and, and um, I mean, that's the main thing. But, but even like I have a Tacoma now. Like, I don't know. I, like I like Toyota stuff. I feel like it's just bulletproof. Yeah. And, and and it's proven, right? Like mm -hmm. they, they do a good job. I mean, the two Jay-Z's proof of that. It's legendary. You know? Yeah. And, and so what a cool car. And that's one of those still where when you see a Supra, even a stock one, even just like a stock red Supra MK4 rolling down the street, if it's taken care of, it'll turn your head just like any, any exotic, oh, yeah. any Supra car. Right? Absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. and, and then if they're modified and they're done right, even more. It's even better. Right? Yeah, even, even better. better. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're just like, wow. And, and I sometimes meet people that are like, Ugh, MK4 Supras are super ugly. And I'm like, what are you talking? It's a car that's like almost 30 years old and it's yeah. awesome. And that's so funny. It, it, that's how you mentioned that is I also realized that the generation gap between like just, you know, you're obviously a bit more older than I am. Whoa, but just whoa, whoa, we don't know that. <laughs> But anyway, no, because of the beard. You got a oh, beautiful okay. beard. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I don't even shave. I never shaved since I was born. Wow, so. I, I envy you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, no, the generation gap is just huge. Like, just compared to the kids. Like, I'm, I'm a 90s kid. Yeah. Right. And then seeing how i know just seeing the generation gap is insane like the kids these days i'm not i'm not seeing as if i'm old or how old are you i am born in 98 so i am 22 22 22 yeah 20, depends 22. on when your birthday is yeah. yeah 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 but anyways yeah no just seeing the like the generation these days like some people just don't know what a super is yeah like they see it, it's like oh this car looks cool is that a gt86 i'm like no <laughs> but then that that gave me to realize I'm like, wow, this is like these these people don't know what a super is. But for us, it's like that's a legendary car. Like, how do you not know it, right? <laughs> Yeah, so so you built the Supra, mm -hmm. um, and then do you have any other cars besides your, your 911? Is there anything else I don't know about? Like, oh, what yeah, else there, is there? I have a McLaren 720S. Okay. A Jeep. What Jeep? There's like a million Jeeps. A Wrangler. It's okay. a Wrangler with a three-inch lift and uh, go Rhino parts. Yeah, I, I'm kind of a, sort of an off-road guy too. Are, are you going to ever come down to Moab? Moab? I don't even know where that is. That's like the most famous Jeep place. That's where they do Jeep week. Like when you hear Oh, about Jeep Moab. Week. Oh my goodness. How do I not know this? I was watching videos the other day. Yes. Um, I, I live right by it. So if you come to my build, mm -hmm. we can go down. It's like two hours. Two, oh, I'm three. definitely down, but... I'm only My a couple hours. Like, it's so. like not re ready. It's a so so. How did you decide on a McLaren? Like, what was what was the decision making process on that? I 
actually McLaren. I never liked McLaren until I got my current car. And uh, the thing is, I had I have had a couple 911s before uh-huh. the current supercar. Um, uh-huh. I had a 4S 2017, so it's obviously a newer generation. And then I sold that for a turbo because I wanted something faster. And eventually, I uh, started doing YouTube and there's not many people that wants to see a turbo and 911 old man like a midlife european midlife crisis car going around doing stuff so i'm like okay so what grabs the attention and kind of looks cool yeah and i could slide around in okay yeah. so huracan so i got the huracan i uh, did a complete carbon body kit on it and then i wanted something even faster because you know i did i set the track record for mission raceway as i know it right now for my yeah. huracan it is 108.5 and that's kind of the limit I got my car to go. And um, so I'm like, okay, so if I want this thing to be faster, what do I do? Twin turbo, that's going to be 60 grand US at least. And yeah. then not let alone the fab work that has to be done and people who do install it. So I'm like, okay, okay, what do I do? McLaren 720S. It makes 720 horsepower out of the factory. And you could do even more mods to get it up to 900 or even more horsepower. So I'm like, okay, let's pull the trigger, sold the Huracan, got the McLaren. And holy crap, that thing is fast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've got a friend like, buying one right now. He's like... It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, it's the fastest car from one from the first gear all the way to, to the end of the, any gear. It just keeps going and going and going. And then I'm like, okay, McLaren, you guys got something here. Like, this is, this is, this is some engineering. Yeah, so well, that's kind I, of why I choose it. I think what's really cool about the McLaren, too, is that's like one of the only non hyper cars right mm-hmm. because what do those run they're um I, I don't even know what they cost to be honest i want to say uh, brand three, new i think like three three hundred and five. yeah three yeah. yeah somewhere around there yeah yeah you're on the ballpark okay so that's what i was thinking so think about that think about what else you can get for like 300 350 the, and then Nothing. and and then from the 720 the 720 resembles a hypercar more than anything, right? Absolutely. When you when you open the doors, the way that the monocoque, it's like a LaFerrari kind of. Yeah. It's when you open up a LaFerrari and it's just that kind of monocoque that yeah. goes in. And that's how the 720s are. The 720 resembles a, a hypercar in so many exactly, ways. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, I, and I bet that had you never seen a 720 before, just you walked up and saw one sitting by a LaFerrari, I bet oh, you I'm couldn't get, guess it's a 300k car. They no, look you like wouldn't, they're you more. Exactly. It looks so much more. You get so much. It's like the best bang. It's hard to say this, but it's like the bang for the buck supercar you can buy. I think it's, so. I, I agree with absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like the bang for the buck. It's, it's probably the best you'll get for 300 grand, unless you start doing th- things, you know, like twin turbo stuff, you know. Yeah. And, and it's tough for me because I think I'd still. I don't know. I'll tell you. I'll tell you when I've got three hundred grand to spend on a car because I'm not sure what I would do. Um, I don't know. There's something about the GT2 RS that still gets oh. me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You got me there. That's yeah. that's that's actually the next option that I saw. But then the the way I drive my cars and how I kind of some people say you know ruin them. Um, I don't. I don't see it's a really good choice to just, you know, really mess up a GT2 RS. And to me, the GT2 RS or any of the GT series, it's still like a very, it's like a holy grail of 911. So I don't really yeah. want to mess with that. No, I totally, I, I agree. I to- mm-hmm. And I think that the other thing is, I think if I had a GT2 RS, I think I'd have a hard time selling it. Like, I don't oh, think it's absolutely. a car, like, I don't think it's a car I'd want to just like enjoy and then sell. I think it's a car that I'd want to like, it grow with you. Buy it and then buy the next one and keep, yeah, and then you know, keep like it. Keep yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's one of my favorite cars I've ever been in. And, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And, and tell me a little bit about your Porsche history then. Let's get into a little bit of that. Let's Porsche learn, history. Yeah, like what what was the first one? Like what, what got you into Porsches? Like how did you decide you wanted Porsches? It, it was 2017 when I first got the 911. I ordered it brand new from Porsche. And then um, it, it kind of was... At that time, I didn't do any social media or and everything. Keep everything low key. Yeah, and I'm not that. I'm not the type of. Um, by all means, I'm not the flashy guy who's like, "Oh yeah, look at this! I have so much money." Blah blah blah. It's more like I just want to enjoy my stuff. 
if I could buy it, if I couldn't afford it, I'll just enjoy it, you know? Yeah. So I thought of the 911 because it's, honestly, it's quite low key compared to other cars and for its performance, it's quite nice. Um, BMWs were too generic, so I didn't really go for the M3 option. Although yeah. I love M3s, even though, still now I do. But the 911 just seemed like a more, how do you say it? A cooler choice, for lack of a better word. And then um, I was like, yeah, that's it's nicely sophisticated. It's quite fast, and it's probably very nice to drive. So pulled the trigger on that one and fell in love with Porsche ever since. So... So, okay, so here's, let, let's get into your other one then. So mm -hmm. it seems like you've got, I, I'm kind of building the bridge in my head of, of how, your way of thinking about this, but it's really interesting. So you, you take like, for example, a 720 or your Lamborghini, you know, or a brand new 911 4S. And, and then you've got like an RWB, which is like an old car. Uh -huh. or or like your mk4 supra as an old car like i'm trying to make that connection because i see you at both ends of this right yeah. is it just that you're like a car guy and you want to experience both ends do you have a preference or is it that you're so track related that you like the track type car but you also still like having a car that's quiet and you can drive around town like what is that it? that actually goes i think it's like very you always see these like you know international students with a lot of money that buy supercars that they, they don't they absolutely have no idea what that is yeah or they look at the supra and be like oh that's a piece of shit because it's an old car yeah and i kind of sit on both ends of the spectrum i guess that kind of ties in with how i grew up is my dad loved cars yeah yeah he always have loved cars and he had every single generation of sti and he would mod the he will mod the living turd out of it yeah and then um bmws and everything and even in japan i just got really into the obviously initial d manga mm -hmm. and then um basically seeing the engineering and everything off older japanese cars i just realized that these are just just cool you know i just wanted one i wanted to experience it and see what i can make out of it and then obviously the newer stuff i'm also into because that's that's kind of technology and that kind of proves the way the engineers have come so far in terms of cars and speed and everything. So kind of, it kind I just of bridges like the gap. Yeah, it bridges the gap really. Like I, I see the old cars, I can appreciate them. I see the newer ones. I also, also fell in love with them too. So. I feel like I feel like building an older car is pretty artistic. Like, mm -hmm. like I'm not gonna go buy a brand new 720s mm -hmm. and like sand all the paint off of it and drop the motor and yeah, paint, right. Like I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, absolutely right on because that. yeah like the car is already good if i bought bought one i'd maybe do i don't know i, I don't even know wheels if they exhaust. make wings or what wings look like but i'd probably be like wheels exhaust and a tune and and call it yeah. right because what else do you do yeah. to a 720 um yeah. and and then i don't know like even i i'm curious with these cars even in because there's a lot more like a mclaren f1 there weren't a lot of them right no, but a mclaren no. 720 there are a lot of them yes and and mp4 12 c's and i mean Even there's more. a lot of mclarens now and there didn't used lot. to be so now when when we're 30 years later and we're talking about like a mclaren f1 it's like wow that's a rare, wow you drove like jay leno drove his mclaren f1 that's crazy because there aren't very many and they're all worth a ton of money oh yeah but but like in in 20 30 years how many 720s are going to be like around and how exactly. many like it, it makes you wonder, like, are they going to be project cars in the future? Mm -hmm. Like, are people going to like hot rod or what do you think in 30 years are people going to be doing like hybrid hot rods or something like doing hybrid swaps and Possibly. electric? That might, that might be, yeah, that might be something along the sides of just how advanced technology gets. Um, eventually there's going to be people who are modding electric. Well, there's still, there are already people modding electric engines. Sure. Uh, motors, sorry. No, you're fine. I get it. I've, um, so, so where did you so tell me about your rwb kind of like what got you into it let's start with um yeah like when when did you decide that that was something you wanted to do like did you where did you first see it like what got you into the the brand and in that yeah you know what let me think hard on that because i think i go quite a while back with rwb like in terms of my passion for rwb yeah um honestly i think it originates with my dad talking about it okay 
Yeah, I think I had a conversation with. I don't talk to him much, but I think we had a conversation about um, Porsches, uh, older Porsches. He always he liked older cars. Like he yeah. just likes older cars. But I'm talking about like 60s, 70s, and 80s that type mm-hmm. of style. Old. And he was like. Oh yeah, you know, like an older 911 will be super nice to just daily around. And then it's like, oh yeah, you heard of RWB? I'm like, what's RWB? So I start just searching it up. I'm like, holy crap, RWB, why haven't I heard of this? Mm-hmm. And then um, I start digging into it. I'm like, okay, this is so cool. And this is so unique. And then read Nakai's story. And then just, you know, the whole nine yards of what an RWB is and how it originates, which is race, racing. Yeah. And then, um, you know, just decided to pull the trigger on an old one and see how I can see if I could build one. And then uh, obviously the opportunity came as, uh, you know, Sid and a lot of people, a lot of other people helped me get into the community of RWB. Yeah. And then eventually did my waiting time and then got the car built. Yeah. It's kind of, I guess that's kind of the gist of the story. What, what, what was the first one that you saw? Like uh, the, the first fir- time you saw one in person? Oh, in person. The first, I actually, ne- oh, the first one. Oh, you know what? That'll probably be uh, in person. Oh, well, that goes back. Where when was that? The first one in person. I think there's a black one in in Vancouver. I I forgot what the name of it was. A black nine nine three. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know what the name of the car. I, I don't know the name of the car, but okay. uh, it was a black nine nine three with the with the RWB kit on it, and that that kind of I'm like, holy crap, that looks so good on the road. That looks, just looks insane. And and then um, eventually, what you met Sid because Sid's up there. It seems like yeah. Sid. Sid does a lot with the community, right? So yeah, how, how did you meet, meet up with Sid? I think it was through Common Friends. Yeah, I okay. think it was just a night gathering out. People were just having fun, drifting around, and then uh, just through Common Friends, met the guy. Cool. Yeah. Um, and so you, you decided it was time to do a car. What, uh, what did you buy for your base? Like, what, what car is your car? The base was a 1988 uh, uh-huh. 9-11 3.2. Okay. And I bought it for 50 grand flat. And it was in really good condition. Like the engine had not many Ks on it. Um, and the car, all the panels are no rust and the interior is in pristine condition. <laughs> and then I decided to cut it up. <laughs> That's what I'm doing too. It's the same yeah. thing. So you bought this. What color was it when you first got it? It was the color white. White? Yeah, it's just pure white. Okay. And then yeah. even now it's, it's no, still white. <laughs> Yeah, so so you um you did your order. Mm-hmm. How long did you have to wait to get your car built or done? I think I waited about seven to eight months. Oh, there that's were, not too uh, bad. It wasn't too bad. No, I was actually supposedly the uh, faster ones to get the car built, but during the time it could have been faster, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but because I I did some um extra stuff to it there were there were waiting times to as i made the parts like the acrylic side windows and the uh the nani dread junior wing mm-hmm. which is like uh something that nakai san doesn't make himself it's actually his uh friend um yeah um and so you ordered it did you have an exact idea of what you wanted or how did you decide what you wanted it to look like as far as what parts to order i based my car off of of Stella Artois, the uh-huh. the black one that Nakai San owns himself, and that kind of just that style, that big headlight, and the whole shape of the car is kind of what I aim my car to be. And basically, right now, it's the white version of Stella. This is the, that my car's name is Stella Junior. So you know, oh <laughs> yeah, 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 that's cool. Um, I I really like those side windows, and because I have a tar guy, I can't do them because it's right. Like, but then, my side but then you got a whole glass at the back. Yeah, so yeah. I don't. I thought about doing like a hood, like a a hood scoop, or not a hood scoop, a roof scoop, like roof scoop on the top of the targa bar. Have something and then that goes, drops down, and then drops down to the engine. Yeah, that's very cool. So I thought about doing something like that. I don't know what I'll do. Um, I wish I wish I could just get like a two hour consultation with Nakai where we just like talk on online and yeah, like, figure out everything. Hey, what will you make for me if I pay for this and that, and have mm-hmm, them, mm-hmm. you know, but whatever um so did you do anything to the car while you're waiting for him like coilovers or like what what kind of stuff did you do while you're waiting to build your car uh we we painted the car into Uh the the design that it is right now and And, and it's like a pretty fancy color isn't it 
Yeah, it's called Bianco Fuji. Actually, Sid came up with this color, and it's the same color as the Maserati MC12 car, race car. Yeah, yeah. And it's like the it's like a mixture between gold and it's like gold flakes inside uh, pearl white paint. So it's it's got like like the gold sheen to it if you shine if the light shines on it. Oh, Pretty, kind of creamy, a little bit creamy colored. Yeah. yeah, it has some like gold pinstripe or something. Oh yeah, too, absolutely. It? it has a gold. Yeah, yeah we kind of we, we took that design from a different RWB that had the black and gold, uh-huh. and we just thought that the white and gold. With the base cold, uh, with a base color of uh, slightly gold, will look pretty nice. So and you, it turned out pretty decent. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen it just in videos and pictures. I'll have to see it in mm-hmm. person. Um, paint, paint never looks the same, right? Like on exactly, videos. A different light and different monitors. Um, what about? Uh, so you did the paint. Did you do anything else to it while you're waiting? I guess you had to get coilovers or yeah, had to get coilovers. Or, what yeah. what did you put on it? Uh, I I used the Nakai Sense Recommended Kit, which which were the uh, Air Gostas. Uh huh. Yeah, and I'm not sure exactly what the model is, but that's okay. Uh, it's the three-way Do- adjustable ones, and uh, Does- he kind of just he just sent it over, and then we installed it. Does it replace the torsion bar, or do you still have a torsion bar? No, it replaces everything. Oh, it does. Yeah, yeah, it's a complete coilover kit. Nice. Were the torsion bars hard to pull out? Uh, had the mechanic do that, I didn't have to do it myself. Oh, nice. uh- <laughs> but from what I heard, yes, it was it was it was a little bit hard. And the car is old because yeah. Helltech is sponsoring my car. Mm-hmm. in terms of the electricals yeah. so my kind of my plan was to it was to stick a ls v8 inside the car yeah but throughout the time it kind of just like i'm like okay well the soul of the car is basically the flat six sound yeah. i don't want to lose that and finding a 930 turbo engine is a little bit more uh, hard to say the least mm-hmm. so i decided to make it into a turbo build and doing a custom fabrication on the 3.2 build the engine um, yeah, kind of make it into a turbo and then have the hell tech ECU take care of it. And then that's kind of like the ultimate goal for that car. But so as that, things are slowing down. Is that kind of mid process now or, or where are you at on the motor and stuff now? Oh, motors, mm, nothing yet. It's just okay. the, the things have been ordered, but we haven't actually begin to put things together yet. It's funny because our choice is super com- com- uh, controversial in that sense. Because there's so many people who are like, yeah, why would you build a 3D2? Why would you do this? Why would you do that? And that's, it's kind of our thing, you know. Yeah, I, that's how I'm, we see it. Um, so when Nakai came, what was that like for you? Was it kind of like meeting one of your heroes, or was it just kind of like surreal? Like, what was that like when when he got off the airplane? Did you go pick him up? Like, what was all that? Like? Yeah. So <laughs> there's the other, you know. Before I get into that funny story of how I picked him up, let's okay. let's do. Um, but yeah, no, Nakai San for me, it's. He has been a hero and still is right now. I, um, I admire the hell out of his work and his dedication to what he does. Yeah. And the first time I met him was through a build locally. Um, I was able to talk to with him briefly and show him kind of what I did on track and how I drove. And he, he seemed definitely interested. He was watching the video since, and since I speak Japanese, Japanese, um, we had a nice couple of conversations before, <clears throat> before I even went into the whole RWB um, build. And to me, like, there's a lot of people saying stuff outside, saying, "Oh yeah, Nakai is this type of person. Nakai is that." Some people say that, "Oh, Nakai, Nakai is you know like, oh, he doesn't talk a lot." Okay, but put it this way: if you're in a different country and you don't speak the language, and everybody's just taking pictures of you and expecting you to do stuff and asking you questions that you have no idea how to answer how would you feel yeah it's the same right it's the same it's like if you talk to him and you know what he who who, who he is he's just a genuine guy who likes cars just a car guy yeah he likes cars he likes well used to like beer loves smoking and yeah. enjoy little conversations i heard he from, likes coke right yeah coca-cola and it yeah. has to be from mexico yeah mexican coke that's the same. mexican coke with cane sugar that's how we are in this house we won't buy a normal coke it's you yeah. gotta get yeah yeah, I asked him. He's like, yeah, it just tastes better. Straight up tastes better. It yeah. does taste better. Yeah, um, it does. But so yeah, it's, anyways. It's, 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 so you got a funny story. Yeah. So when I picked him up from the airport, I um, I went in my, I, I picked him up with a Huracan. Okay. And had a, and then. And what then, color it, was it? It was, it was black when I picked him up, but then okay. um, you, you can, yeah, on my Instagram, you can scroll all the way down and then had a couple libraries on it. But anyways. Picked him up with the Huracan and then realized, I'm like, oh shit, what did I do about his suitcase? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the first time. He came twice. The one to do the roof. 
to cut the roof yeah. on the on my eleven to make a carbon. So right now uh-huh. I have a carbon roof. So okay. that's the first time I picked them up. But anyways, picked up in the Huracan, and then I realized there's no space for the luggage. So what did I do? I, so I went, ran behind, grabbed a cab. I'm like, here, take this luggage, just follow me. And that <laughs> from the airport to my to the shop that it was being done at, I just drifted the entire way. Oh man! Yeah, I just start drifting all through all the corners, and then I guess that's I was kind of over my head. I'm like, oh okay, you know, I gotta show him what I gotta do. And, bit, and he got kind of he he enjoyed it. He like didn't even fuss about it. Just text on his phone, drifted. Oh nice! And they kept kept texting, and then until we get there, and then he just did, he just does the thing. Ah, huh, that's cool. But yeah, sometimes I, sometimes his girlfriend comes too, right? So you don't know exactly, if it's gonna that, be both of them or not. Yeah, that's the second time. Um, you can. Yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, we. It's funny because I actually went to the I, I Delirious race back in uh, 2019. Yeah. Yeah, the race series that he 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 does. Um, but yeah, no, we spent quite a lot of time together, the Kaisen and all the the RWB Japan crew. But the second time I picked him up was for the actual build, and this time I made sure everything was like as Perfect. solid as possible, and yeah. made sure that Nakai feels warm and not being, you know, seen as like a. You know, just like a character to to to, but basically picked them up in a good uh, truck, and then picked up my godmother and godfather, which were Nakai-san's friend. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, and then we kind of just came over to the shop and started doing our thing along cool. with his girlfriend, obviously. How how long? Um, so the first time he came, he flew out just to cut your roof. Just to cut my roof. And then he just flew home, or was he going somewhere yeah. else? Second day, flew home. Did it did it feel like he was just in and out and gone? Like, okay, we're working on my oh my car's done already. Like Yeah, the the the, the roof definitely kind of felt that way. Um I was actually, I was I was glad that I'm able to help him with a couple of parts. Nothing special, just screwing a couple of screws and you know stuff like that. Um, yeah. and then he and then right as we finished, we didn't even have time to get dinner. We just booked it to the airport. Wow. Yeah, but that that one felt a little bit rushed. But and then the second one Lakai san really took his time and didn't really worry and stress too much about the whole thing and he just kind of relaxed you know uh take more breaks than he usually can which is awesome because i want him to relax and do his thing and that one felt just family oriented because um, everybody we know was there yeah what well, on on your card i think it was yours i might be wrong did he use a sawzall to cut your fenders instead of using his <laughs> grinder wheel is yeah, that right uh, that yeah, that's that's because I bought a air supply, but it was it was pretty big for yeah. what it is. Still, nothing like it's nowhere near enough for him to cut four fenders on one air on that air supply. It just kept break. It's popping the circuit, running out of yeah, running out. And then we eventually, it's like you know what, let's just do a saza. And then um, he's like, okay, that will work. And then we did it. Huh? Did it work? So I, I should probably warn you since you're doing your build, but the couple. I would say like one or two days before, you're probably not going to get much sleep, if any sleep at all. It's like Christmas, right? And just trying uh, not to only get that, stuff it's, ready. it's Christmas. It's like the, the feeling I got from before Nakai-san came, it was not since, it was not like excitement. It was more of, okay, okay, okay. What do I do with this part? Like, how do I make this good? Like, you know, what, what do I do to make everybody happy and everybody, I got to host everybody who's coming. And then it was kind of just hectic all over the place, but somehow... It worked out. I did not sleep for two days straight yeah. just to make sure everything is okay. The lighting was okay. And every, like the food was there for everybody to eat. What'd you do for food? Oh, it was just, uh, there was pizza for, well, th- that was for late night one. Um, Chinese dim sum, mm. uh, I think sushi as well. Sandwiches. Yeah. Basically yeah. the whole, we, every time we get food, it's for everybody who's vegan. Don't eat whatever, you know, it's it, it make sure everybody gets a, something. Man, you're good. Oh, I'm, I, I'm gonna do top ramen i'm gonna just gonna have a big pot and i'll just be dumping top ramen in it all night <laughs> people can just, they'll just pull, pull out whatever top ramen they want and we'll be solid that's probably, that, that that's probably that's probably, yeah that's pretty smart actually <laughs> I, I, I will like that i love ramen <laughs> <laughs> i am um, i can make gyoza really well i'm really yeah. good at making gyoza so maybe i'll make like a million gyozas that's there like you go. it's one of those foods that when you go to a when you go to like a Japanese restaurant, they always just buy the the pot stickers and they boil them or, or whatever. Yeah. They don't ever hand make them. No, They're always no, just they don't. the pre made ones, right? Yeah, just, it is. It is. Even, yeah, even absolutely. The nice, like you could go to a place that's like, I don't know, like 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 two hundred bucks per person per like, meal. Yeah, yeah like two hundred dollars sashimi. Yeah, 
Yeah, and they're and still going to give you frozen pots same, too. You're going to get the same gyoza. It tastes the same too. Like yeah. the, the fillings, it's, if you buy it from the store here, it tastes absolutely the same. It's just like frozen, nasty, boiled like pork and vegetables so you don't even know what they yeah. are. <laughs> pork cabbages, yeah, pork yeah. cabbage. And it, it's just like gross. And and yeah. so I can I make handmade ones that like I can eat probably. Like we'll eat them just for dinner. We don't do like as a side. We'll just do it like a gyoza dinner. Yeah. And and I don't know, I'd say every single person eats at least 20 of them. Like you, oh, yeah, you absolutely. And, and they're so good that you can't stop eating them until you realize you're like too full. And you're like, yeah, oh you're, my gosh, what you did I like do? You look like you're pregnant basically at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, that's how it is. When we're, no, so I feel you on that, dude. I'll, I'll make you some when you come down. Um, absolutely. So I guess that kind of talks us through like getting it done. So what are, what are and I know we're kind of wrapping up on time, what are kind of future plans for the car? So oh, the motor. Yeah, the motor obviously is one of them. Um, the future, probably some, I would say maintenance things for yeah. the for, for the for the nine eleven at least. Um, there is a couple parts. I don't have a roof liner right now, the headliner, since mm. uh, we cut the roof off and it's yeah. just raw carbon on top. So I do plan to get something done there. A couple wiring issues, whereas the uh, you know the just the older car and the compatibility with things and how we're gonna work out the ECU, how to communicate. And the biggest, biggest problem I have right now is probably converting to coil packs on the engine because right now it's still running on distributors. Mm-hmm. And we can't really adjust timing on a distributor cap because it just, you know, it just, does, yeah. it just spins around. So we're trying to convert to coil pack, but there's, I can't find anybody that has done it before because no one really mods a 3.2 anyways, mm-hmm. let alone modding a older Carrera because most people just keep it stock. So, you know, I was thinking... Oh, what's the route I could go with uh, in terms of uh, getting it to actually be tuned? Well, if um, <coughs> if, money, if money is no object and you can just do whatever, you might you might even call like TurboCraft and and see a what you know. Have you have Turbo you heard Craft. of those guys? No, Turbo, oh, actually, those I'll guys. Do you know Bong? Well, yes, absolutely. Love um, Bong. they they did the motor in his nine thirty. Uh huh. And and those guys like I think they're kind of like the hands down and and I guys uh, yeah yeah cool, cool, I cool. I would talk to those guys um, they either might have some ideas and sell you some parts or they're in Arizona I kind of want to just when I get done with my just drop raw the well, car all over I, I might just ship it down to them and have them build yeah you know motor. what that probably is a better idea just ship the car down let get them done ship it back I, I'm telling you right now if you have money that's the place to go they're expensive. But wow. I've I've seen their builds and I've seen what they do, and and um like on a nine thirty they can get reliable five five hundred fifty at the wheels on the nine thirties. Oh. <clears throat> I so, just want four fifty. That's like that's <clears throat> four fifty is all I want. So I I would imagine that those guys could go through. They've got some parts that they make. They've got mm-hmm. some stuff that's specific to them, um. And it's awesome. Everything mm-hmm. that those guys do is awesome. So well, it's that's one of good those, to know. Yeah, they're expensive, but they're the place that if you want things done if, properly, if you want the best motor, it, it's one of those things where if you were to ever sell your car, like like Bong's car, you know, it's like, hey, um, I've got a 930. You know, it's not stock, but the motor was done by TurboCraft. Yeah, then somebody's going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll done. Take it. Like, I want it, right? They're not scared Absolutely. of it because TurboCraft did it. So. Right. So that that's what I would probably look is that, into. Is that a is that a nine eleven back there on the dinosaur painting? Yeah. Is that a, that is that a dinosaur? Or what it is? Yeah. So do you know do you know R W B Rocky? Rocky, Rocky. Yeah, I he, think he's so. from Portland. He's got that back date, the gray one. Oh. oh Specter is his yeah, yeah 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 oh yeah yeah yeah. So Rocky has a mint green nine six four, and maybe like. A year ago, he went to Cabazon, which is outside of Palm Springs, mm-hmm. and that's where those dinosaurs are. So those are oh, so that's actually that's really cool. It's actually his painting. I haven't sent it to him. I painted that, right? And and um, that's it's awesome, his dude. it's his painting. I've been meaning to send it, and it's uh, his well, car. You're an artist. That's that's cool. That's awesome stuff. Thank man. you. I want a piece of that. Okay. <laughs> I, I will. I will. I will pay for one. <laughs> Yeah, let me. We well, we can talk after this, so I can kind of yeah. keep pricing and stuff. But sounds good. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so you're gonna build your car a little bit more. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be an evol- Let me just ask you a couple of things as we're finishing. What yeah. um, what's it like when when you drive your car? Like, what's the reaction? Like, 
maybe a from your friends like do you have friends when you first did it that hadn't seen it yet or didn't know you're doing it like what's it like when you see people and you're driving that car oh that's that's a hard question for me as like i hate saying this and i hate I probably people who are listening probably sound this is probably think oh this guy's shitting but no like when i drive my cars i never really pay much attention to other people yeah not like as in like yeah, like I never, I never like, like you're focused oh, I, on the drive. And, yeah, I'm focused yeah. on my own car. Like I, I literally buy the cars because I enjoy them myself. Yeah. Yeah, right. And then the, the content and the things are just what comes after. So, but then, but I can still answer the question because my friend will actually mention to me whenever he's with me. He's like, dude, look at all these people watching the car. I'm like, oh, you're absolutely right. This is crazy. <laughs> you know, like yeah. the reaction I get is, it's pretty insane. Whenever I park this anywhere, it just, just boom, stop what they're doing, take photos, proceed on. Yeah. And but, then there's obviously people are, who are just gnawing and looking at it. I mean, you know, I've been, I've been to BC quite a bit and yeah. there's a lot of really nice cars up there, right? Especially oh, yeah. when, you, when you go down by, I don't know what the area is called, but like right downtown, right against the bay where there's like all those giant art sculptures and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's that gelato place that's really famous, like right down in that building right by the water. Uh-huh, it, i don't know if, i don't Pacific, know yeah, yeah. It, they're like the number one like they've won all these awards i've been to that place uh-huh. anyway like when you're down in that area there's like ferraris and mclarens and lambo uh, everything it's everything like there. you're gonna see like um super rapid days like you see everything there yeah absolutely it, and, and you've got cool stuff too but i would have to imagine that even with everything that you have i would imagine you get more looks and more attention in your raw well car yeah. than, than you do in, in any of that other stuff. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And I, I do enjoy it to a certain degree. I'm not going to lie. Um, after I have noticed the uh, attention it gets. And um, yeah. Have you taken your car on track yet at all? No, not yet. That thing is nowhere near ready for okay. what I'm doing to it. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know if you'd do like a baseline. Like here's how fast my car is stock. Mm-hmm. Here's how fast it is with suspension and wheels. Here's how fast I, it is with my turbo motor, right? I or definitely whatever. would do it, except, like I said, the next step is probably maintenance more yeah. than the motor, since I'm pretty sure if I drove it on the track right now, it would just fall apart. Yeah. There's, there, is, there are certain things right now, like the gear shifter is just, you know, so it's, 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 it's in drivable condition, but definitely not trackable. But I would, you know what, that is probably one of the plans I have is to get a baseline of what it does right now, and then after the build and seeing what what it can do i think it just motivates you it kind of pushes you a little bit harder and further right it's going to just push you a little bit more so um well cool well i really appreciate you taking the time with me no no worries man thank you for having me again hopefully hopefully you can make your way down here maybe maybe by then you can send your car to turbocraft which is you know i think it's like eight hours from my house and then and then you could um because it's in arizona then you could fly down over pick up your car drive it up here and then just either ship it home from here or keep going but, yeah i mean it's all western united states it's not that crazy especially if you're on a, a new motor it would be Let pretty how far how far utah is from vancouver if i were to drive down Ooh, from vancouver if you were to drive here i bet i'm gonna guess don't tell me but i bet right. i'm gonna guess because i don't i don't think it'll have you go through portland i think it would have you go through montana mm-hmm. so my guess from there to here is 16 hours you are right you're one hour away it's 17 hours and 40 minutes oh so it, i'm two hours basically two but you yeah, shave go, i bet you'd shave 40 minutes off knowing you yeah <laughs> see you go through seattle and then through idaho and then into utah yeah so you go yep that's that's how i'd imagine like northern yeah. idaho or something like spokane washington 17 hours okay yeah i'll ship the car down, <laughs> I'll yeah, just ship it down. that's probably what i would do. i mean to be honest that's the, the place but mm-hmm. if you want to go all out and go to that 450 range on yours and, and yeah. do turbos and stuff um i i'd probably call turbo craft and just start there it's sounds good from what i understand it's worth every penny and based on what you've just told me about your other cars i think that you'd probably be okay just to get it done right and, yeah right just have we'll see how it. we go forth on that yeah probably so, turbo craft so so keep keep in touch with me and and let me know kind of what of you course. find out because i'll be interested to know what you find out because it's going to be the same build for me i've got to mm-hmm. do the exact same as whatever you do with them because right. my my plan too so well cool well i really appreciate it again um let's stay in touch um 
I will message you on the art stuff too and, and we'll go Sounds from there. Good. Definitely so. interested in that. So yeah, thanks for thank having me. Thank you so me. much. Have a good night. And, you take uh, care. Talk soon. Thanks. Cool. Thanks.